Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to find the rotation matrix for any given rotation that you like about the origin. So it could be 35 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 135, whatever it is. So to start off with, we'll be deriving this rotation matrix in a sort of general case. And then I've got a couple of examples where we're gonna use this to find the rotation matrix for a given angle. So I'll timestamp each part of the video below. Uh, and if it is useful, please do like and subscribe. Okay, let's start off by deriving a generic rotation matrix, which is gonna describe a rotation anti-clockwise about the origin by any angle that we like, okay? And hopefully you'll remember that to do this, to find a transformation matrix, we can see what happens to both the points one zero and zero one under that transformation. And that gives us the new columns of our transformation matrix. So let's focus in on the point one zero. Let's see what's gonna to happen to this point as I rotate it around by some given angle theta. Well, hopefully you can see this isn't perfect, but as I'm rotating it around, its distance from the origin is remaining fixed at a length of one. So let's just rotate it by some generic angle theta, okay, because I'm trying to get a generalized uh, matrix here. Well, if I drop a perpendicular here, you can see I've constructed a right angle triangle. And if I could find this point here, where I've just put the cross, the coordinates of this point, well, that would give me the first column of my transformation matrix. So how could I do that? Well, I'm gonna use this right angle triangle because opposite my angle, I have the opposite side. Opposite the right angle is my hypotenuse, which has a length of one. And this side here is my adjacent side. So how could I find the X coordinate of this point? Well, that's just gonna be this side here, isn't it, of my triangle, which is the adjacent. So how can I find the adjacent side? Well, remember, cos of the angle, so cos of theta, is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And so if something's over one, the adjacent divided by one is just the adjacent. And so we get that cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent side. And so that distance there is just cos of whatever the angle is. Now with similar logic, we could find the y coordinate because look, that's just how high up we've gone from the x-axis. And that happens to be my opposite side. And so we have sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, uh, the hypotenuse, which is one. And so whatever the opposite is divided by one is just the opposite. And so we get that sine of the angle is equal to the length of the opposite side. And so the y coordinate is just sine of theta. Okay, now we're gonna repeat this process, but for this coordinate, the coordinate zero, one. So again, let's draw on our sort of our line. Imagine I'm rotating it around by that same angle theta and it ends up about there. So I've rotated it around by an angle theta. Let's construct another right angle triangle. So what is gonna be the X coordinate of this point here? Well, that's how far I've traveled in this direction along the X axis, which happens to be, if you look, the opposite side of this triangle. And remember, what links our opposite side and our, our angle? Well, remember this is length one, so we have sine of the angle is equal to the opposite. Now it's not positive sine because we've moved to the left of the y-axis, so it's negative. So this x-coordinate here is gonna be negative sine of theta. Let's now find the y-coordinate. And remember, that's how high we've gone on the y-axis or how far up we've moved. And that happens to be the adjacent side. And so to find that is just cos of our angle. So it's cos of theta. So these translated points or rotated points are the new columns of our matrix. And so the generic transformation matrix for a rotation theta degrees about the origin anti-clockwise is gonna be cos theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta. And so all we need to do is input uh, a value of theta and that will tell us how to rotate about the origin anti-clockwise by that angle. So let's have a look at a couple of questions now. Whoops, using this, I'll make sure I bring it all down. So this is my matrix, I'll bring it down. So the first question says, find the matrix representing a rotation 45 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So I'm just gonna substitute the value of theta as 45, so let's work this out. I've got my matrix is gonna be cos 45, negative sine 45, sine 45, and cos 45, whoops, 45. So let's substitute those values in. 
and we get cos of 45 is just root 2 over 2. Negative sine uh, of 45 is going to be negative root 2 over 2. Sine 45 is root 2 over 2 and cos 45 is root 2 over 2. And so we could factorize out this root 2 over 2 like so and we get the matrix is 1, negative 1, 1, 1. And so this matrix here represents a rotation 45 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. Let's now look at another example of how to use this. It's pretty straightforward once you've got it. So here we want to describe a rotation 135 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So instead of substituting in theta as 45, this time it's 135. So we get cos of 135, negative sine of 135, sine of 135 and cosine of 135. Let's now evaluate this. So I'll start with cos of 135 and that's going to give me negative root 2 over 2. Sine of 135 is root 2 over 2 and so obviously we get negative sine of 135 is negative root 2 over 2 and finally the last one is cos of 135 which we know is root 2 over 2. Okay, again, I'm going to factorize out this root 2 over 2, and we get our matrix is negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, if it was, please do like and subscribe and go over to my channel where I have tons of other maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.